Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril, and today we have another one of our, well, the second in the series of our Let's Talk Tabletop series of videos. And today we are moving through the Fellowship, continuing with our journey through them, and we are focusing on Legolas Greenleaf. So without further ado, let's talk tabletop. Yes, today we are focusing on giving you a brief rundown on Legolas Greenleaf, Archer Extraordinaire, Elvish Prince, Slayer of Mamux, and very acutely aware that... They're taking the Hobbits to Isengard! Uh, so we'll kick off with uh, his basic stats. Uh, Legolas Greenleaf has a movement of 6 inches. He is fight value 6 with a shoot value of 3+. plus. He is strength 4, which is fairly solid and fairly consistent for a hero. Uh, defense for standard, which is a little bit upsetting considering he's such a, a big player in the films and the books and uh, you think maybe he'll have a little bit more stave power natively on his profile, but that's just me. Uh, he is two attacks, two wounds, courage six, with three might, two will and three fate, so he is no slouch. Uh, he is a hero of valor, which means he can take uh, a maximum of 15 warriors in his warband, which is only really applicable when you're running him as a Halls of Thranduil uh, leader. Uh, he is armed with elf daggers and an elvish bow. Uh, the elf daggers mean that on the rare occasion that he is losing a fight or drawn with a fight uh, with somebody who has the same fight value as him, that he will be winning those fight values on a roll of a 3, 4, 5 or a 6 rather than the usual 4, 5, 6. It's always good to have an elven weapon. Uh, those extra bonuses when it comes to the roll-offs are really handy, uh, especially if, uh, like me, you forget that's a thing. So it's nice to have that little bit of, uh, of protection there just to make sure he can... Uh, he can push through those fights as much as he can. Uh, he has Heroic Accuracy and Heroic Strike available to him, meaning he can always shoot first. Uh, and the Strike will mean he can spend a might point to bump his fight value up by 6 to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the bigger beasties. Uh, he has a few upgrades available to him. He has a horse, which greatly increases his maneuverability. Uh, mounting him on horseback as well means you can get an extra 2 inches uh, for the uh, half movement penalty on firing his bow. Quite nice and tasty, especially when we get to the, uh, the Deadly Shot special rule. Uh, in a moment you'll see where this combination kind of slides in together. Uh, he can also be given armour to up his defence uh, by 1 to a respectable 5, give him a little bit of a buffer, and an elven cloak as can all the other fellowship members which just give him a little bit more protection at range. He is also a woodland creature so he is not affected by any sort of woods or forest, there is no penalty to his movement for that so he's free to move as he would normally through all the, uh, the forest and woodland terrain. Okay, now we get on to his special rules. He's got two very cool uh, special rules here. His first special rule is Deadly Shot. Now, this uh, boils down basically to meaning he can fire his bow three times in the shoot phase, uh, which makes him a nice little uh, machine gun platform at range, and an elf bow having a 24-inch range with strength three. It's going it's to fell a few orcs. It's going to fell a few orcs before they get in. Uh, so it's, uh, it's quite good to have that there to uh, kind of... He can, he can quite easily lock down a flank, for a turn or two on his own, just by being that threat piece at range, uh, especially if we're up against defense four, defense five uh, enemy models, uh, he can pop them on fives. And uh, with a three might, he's, uh, he's no slouch at doing so, so you could just use him as a little bit of a machine gun platform. Uh, or alternatively, rather than firing his bow three times in the shoot phase, uh, he can elect to make one single shot, which will always hit on a two plus. And that is regardless of models being in combat, of models being, um, mounted or having to randomize for horse or mount uh, and disregards all in the way test so as long as you can roll that two you're going to hit your target which is incredible and this gets around the uh, the inability for good models to shoot into combat it is extremely effective in getting rid of big scary mounts now i'm talking um it's really effective for popping uh, shelob early on maybe just getting that that hit through doing the wound and hoping she fails a courage test and run away uh, but what i've seen it used mostly for and the most effective way of using this so far that I've seen is to do some serious damage to Ringwraith Felbeast mounts uh, early doors. Ringwraith gets into combat. <gasps> cat! Hello cat! It's Mary. Demon cat. Look at the demon cat. Uh, but yeah, I have genuinely seen people burn a, a load of might just to try and kill a fell beast uh, early doors in the game and vastly decrease the effectiveness of any ring wraith that might be uh, atop it. Um, and it's really good for picking off, say you've got um, Gothmog running at you on a wag, or a big 
Hitty Hero who's mounted Sullivan or again any of the ring ropes on horseback. Uh, just that one shot on a 2+, plus, uh, the mount is dead and suddenly that hero has lost an awful lot of killing power and a lot of potency. Probably my most favourite addition to Legolas since uh, the new edition of the rulebook came out. And it's uh, it's my favourite because it's just so themey. And you know what? You know, you guys should know by now, on this channel, theme is key. But yes, so my absolute favourite rule that they've added to Legolas is Final Count 42. Now this is in reference to the films and Legolas and Gimli's uh, little kill count contest they have going on all through all three films. If uh, Legolas ever has fewer kills than Gimli, if Gimli is in your army, if you're running Fellowship, which uh, if you're running Legolas and Gimli, you more than likely are. Um, yeah, if Legolas ever has fewer kills than Gimli, his shoot value is increased by one, which is incredible. That makes That makes his ability to put pressure on early doors really, really powerful. Uh, the only slight caveat to that is you're going to be putting pressure on initially with Legolas because he can do more at range than Gimli can. So what's probably going to be the sequence of events is Legolas is going to shoot early, get some kills up, um, as Gimli has a counter rule to this as well. He's got a very similar thing. We'll get to that when we do Gimli's um, tabletop talk. Uh, and then Gimli runs in with his bonus, cleaves through a load more orcs, cleaves through the uh, the enemy lines, whereupon Legolas gets his bonus back and he can start being more effective. Uh, so that's kind of the sequence which you're going to probably see most commonly. But yeah, having having Legolas shooting with three shots, hitting on a two plus with a strength three bow and three might points available, that's that, that's enough to strike some fear into the heart of any 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 mortal orc or urukai or even even a troll on the tabletop. It's a really cool themey rule, and I absolutely love that they've brought this in. Uh, and it just brings a lot more character to the models on the tabletop and really makes you feel a little bit more immersed in. Uh, in the characters and in the games that you're playing. Uh, thematically, Legolas fits obviously with the Fellowship and Halls of Thranduil. He can lead warbands with Tariel, and the Mirkwood army bonus for that is um, Mirkwood rangers led by these specified heroes. Do not count towards your army's bow limit. That's a little bit sexy. That's a little bit nasty. And uh, yeah, that hurts. You don't make many friends. You don't make friends with elf bows. You don't make friends with elf bows. Why now? Where do I think he fits in? Uh, what are his strengths? He's a, he's a really effective fighter. His fight six, strength four, uh, standard for quite a lot of the bigger main characters in the game. Uh, it's very unlikely he's going to be losing fights early doors. And with the three might points to back him up, he can force through the fights he wants. Uh, and on the rare occasion at which he draws a fight with somebody, those elven daggers are going to just tip it a little bit more in his favour. So he's unlikely to lose the fights, at least until his resources run dry. As we said, he's a, he's a great archer. Uh, the biggest issue I've... I've experienced myself with Legolas and I can see uh, his defense four can let him down. Uh, it means that if a hero or something strength four, something big and beardy gets in, uh, or even just some of the more elite, or even just Urukai, Urukai can wound Legolas on a 50 50. They've got four plus to wound Legolas if they win the fight. Uh, so if he gets bogged down and he hasn't got the resources to pull himself through, you're, you're very much looking at, at, at elf sushi, at, you know, as an elf kebab. Again, like we say, he's got the fight value and the might to be able to, to push through those fights as and when he needs to. But with only two attacks, you're you're going to struggle to make that a consistent win for Legolas, I think. And, and I have done in the past myself. I've really struggled to keep him on the table once those resources start dwindling. So it's a careful balancing act between where do you spend the might? Do you spend the might early doors, get those shots off and thin the herd early doors? Or do you maintain them a little bit more? Just uh, use him as a bit more of a denial piece? Because he's a very good area denial piece. There's no question of that. There have been games I've had Legolas not be in combat. And then at the point at which he wants to use the might points to try and shoot, there's, either, there's, there's no combat for him to get into. And there's no targets for him to get into because everything is already tied up. And apart from his deadly shot sniper shot, there's nothing he can do to really be effective. So it, it, it's a careful balancing act. He's... I feel like on paper he's a lot more point and click than he is in practice. He takes some finesse to get right. Um, you cannot overextend him and you cannot expect him to run into a full war band of, of models, uh, particularly at strength four, uh, and A survive and B carve through them. Um, I think that's an unrealistic expectation. And it's just going to be a careful balance of learning where and when to use his might most effectively. Uh, I forgot to mention as well that in the Halls of Thranduil, uh, list he can also take all quiz which is a nice little addition uh, all in all i think legolas is, is a very sound and solid model his rules and his extra 
stores of Mike Will and Fate are what really make him pop. And um, I really think that a, a decent player is going to get some good use uh, out of Legolas. And also it has to be said that all the sculpts uh, for, for all these Legolas... Legolases? Legoli? It perfectly captures the character of Legolas and Orlando Blooms from the films. And every single one has been a joy to paint. For me and I'm uh, I'm a little bit gutted I've only got these few to show off to you because I seem to paint the same sculpts over and over again uh, for various armies I need to broaden my Legoli horizons uh, anyway so that will conclude our second let's talk tabletop video I certainly hope you guys enjoyed I really hope you found the video fun and helpful and um, let me know what you thought in the comments if you think this is a series that you want us to continue and just uh, talk through some more heroes we're probably going to finish off the fellowship at the very least so that's the main nine characters in the films done uh, but if you want to see anything else other than that, please let us know. Your feedback helps make this channel what it is, and we couldn't do it if it wasn't for you guys. So thank you all so much. Really hope you've enjoyed. And as always, we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.